So I just realized I've been calling all of these Gardia, and I knew my brain kept saying to me, don't do that. The Prairie Sun and the Denver Daisy are Rubecchia. They still have the same type of growing conditions as the Gardia, but they, they are the ones that you want for your cut flowers. Whereas the Gardia, I find some people do use it for cut flower, but I find it wilts. I don't know. There must be some special technique. Maybe you have to harvest them very early in the morning and then soak them for a longer time, condition them longer. I'm not sure what the trick is for that, but I need to redo my tags because I just had one of those moments when you get, get going with all the seeds and I just, I don't know, messed up, but that's okay. We all do that sometimes. So I'm going to switch out my, switch this out. So it says Rebecca instead of Giardi on there. Uh, but everything else that I said stands the same. I don't think I, I read the packages they were planted the right way so <laughs> I don't know I just just had a little a little moment with my brain there that happens but so the prairie sun and the denver daisy are rubecchia so let's make that clear because I probably had some of you just screaming at the screen going those aren't those aren't Gardia. so you know we make mistakes but at least I figured it out before, I don't know, it wouldn't really matter. They like the same growing conditions. It would have just been that I'm saying the wrong thing all the time. Eventually, I think it would have clued in like it did, thankfully, before they even sprouted. Hi there, Fair Plant Girl here. Today, I'm in my greenhouse planting Giardia. I'm hoping to get a few poppies planted as well. So the poppies, are something I usually just direct sow, but it's really mucky and wet and squishy outside. And I would just like to get a few started inside this year and give that a try. And I have something special I'm gonna do to do that. So hopefully we'll get that done in this planting time as well. Let's start with the Giardia or blanket flower is a common name. This is a great flower, perennial through lots of the prairies. It's a native plant to a lot of the prairies. And it's just a fabulous plant to have. Pollinators love it. It brings lots of color. It's pretty carefree. Uh, and it likes a, a hot, dry spot to live. Hence being a, a native plant for the prairies. So the ones I'm planting today are Denver Daisy. And from all accounts, what I can find is this is perennial in zones five to nine. I haven't grown this one before. It's supposed to be yellow dabbed with red. And when I saw the photos of it, I was just like, I need to try this and try and have it in my yard. I do find sometimes things labeled as zone, as hardy to, down to zone five or four, sometimes just haven't been tested up in my Northern area here. I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, and I'm in zone three. So maybe if I cross my fingers just right and we get just the right snow cover in the winter, I'll get these to come back next year. But for now, I'm just going to try and get some growing. The other one that I'm growing uh, is the Rebecca Prairie Sun. I had this in my garden last year. This is perennial from zones three to nine, three to seven. So zones three to seven. Prairie Sun. And I wasn't sure last year when I planted it. It took a lot of digging around to find the hardiness rating on this for me. And this year I was able to, to get a hold of that. So um, I'm expecting to have a few plants of this coming back this year, as well as it probably drops some seed and I might have some volunteers in the yard. So I'm only going to plant three of this this year, just to guarantee that I have some because they were beautiful. They were gorgeous in um, my cut flower arrangements. And they're just a beautiful, bright, bright yellow color. Not a soft, buttery kind of yellow, but a nice, intense color. So I'm really excited to have these again. And then I have Arizona Apricot. And this one, um, I've never grown this before, but I'd really like to get some more of those kind of apricot kind of tones. I'm planting a lot of plants this year that are apricot is the color of them. I think they'll be really nice to use in arranging for flowers and just to have in the yard. And this one is supposed to be hardy from zones three to three to nine. So once I get this going in my yard, I should be able to have it for years to come. So I'm very excited to have these three varieties to sow. I have my tags all written out behind me here and I have my plant pots all filled with soil here. So I'm just using, uh, what is this? This must be about a three inch pot here. 
a couple of them are just slightly smaller so that's what I'll be potting in and they're just filled with regular potting soil my seed starting mix actually is what it is so these packages are from two different companies uh, one is Vessi seeds and one's TT seeds and the Vessi seed says to just sow these apricot ones on the soil surface so that's what I'll be doing they also said I should have started them six to eight weeks before my average last frost but I think I'll be okay starting them at this point and the others are from TT seeds and they say to just barely cover them with soil and to just barely cover the seeds with soil and to start them four to six weeks before my average last frost. So I'm right around that four weeks mark. I'd planned to get them done at six weeks to kind of find that happy medium, but I just, I just didn't get that done. So they're all gonna get planted today at this point. They all need light and warmth to germinate, but not warmth like on a, a heat pad, just like 21, 22 degrees kind of thing Celsius. So just basically inside your house somewhere should Get them germinated as long as it's not like down in a cold basement or something and then once they've germinated and they've gotten several true leaves they say they do better to be out in a cooler space so if you have you know a, this might be the spot where if you have some lights you could put down like in a basement or somewhere or if you have like i do this unheated greenhouse that might be a good spot for them where it's around like 12 to 14 degrees celsius would be better for them you can take all of these seeds, being perennial seeds, you could just direct sow them in the early spring once the soil is warm. If you did that, if you direct sow them in the spring, then they're probably not going to flower for you, I'm guessing, in that first year. They'll probably just get established in that first year, maybe bloom right at the end of the season. And then they're perennial, so they'd come back the next year for you and you would be able to enjoy them that year. Another thing about Giardia that it's not really a fan of having um, a lot of fertilizer. So this is a plant that you want to kind of skip by when you're fertilizing your plants. And you want to get it a nice light soil that's going to drain freely. They will be perennial for you in heavy soil, but they probably won't last more than a couple of seasons if your soil is very heavy and doesn't drain well. So we're pretty heavy clay here, but a lot of my garden beds are quite well amended so I think we should be okay but time will tell I guess right so anyways I want to get these started I've been talking enough here and it's really it's just basic seed starting so I want to get my prairie sun so I don't forget that I just want a few I'm going to do those right away so it's a new pack but I did grow this in the past probably enough so there's the seeds like I said the plants I had last year probably dropped a few of these little seeds so hopefully I have some little seedlings coming up in my yard and I'm just gonna take two and drop them down on the surface now you don't have to start with such a large pot like this but uh, sometimes with perennial plants and hardy plants like this, I find sometimes their root systems can get quite large quite quickly. Sometimes if you get a lot of those roots going in the bottom and the tops aren't as big, sometimes you don't realize what's happening. They might be drying out too much. You might be having trouble keeping them watered properly. Remember, these don't want to sit in water, but they do need frequent watering. So sometimes it's just easier to start them out in something larger and let the roots fill that space. That's just my thoughts. If you don't have room for something this big in your seed starting area, then you could certainly start with something smaller. Even something like a small yogurt container or something would probably be a good size planting pot to start with. Just make sure you put a little hole in the bottom for drainage. Okay, so I put the Garadia, the Arizona apricot tag in. So let's get this one started. Oh, and I wound up, cause I had put, I don't know, 10, 12 seeds in my hand there for those three pots. So I just put them all, spread them all out between those couple of cells there. Again, I'm gonna aim for two per container, but they're small seed. So let's do what I can here. So my soil is already moistened. and tamped down a little bit. 
so that when I water these, they shouldn't, they shouldn't move, the soil shouldn't move around and bury these seeds too deep on me. That's always something important to, to think about when you're starting seeds. Those flew all over the place. I'm trying to get them in the center. Okay, I have about half a dozen seeds for another year if I need them. And then this is the Denver Daisy. It says there's 25 seeds in this package. Oof, they're yellow. I was not expecting that. Huh. I wonder if they've been treated or something? I don't think it said they were, but maybe online it did. Uh, okay, so again, two in each spot and it should be pretty easy to see when I have two in each spot here. Oh, one's on the floor. So if you've grown this variety before, let me know. Are the, the seeds really this color or were they treated us in the I don't know if you can, if it's showing up on the camera, they're bright, bright yellow. I'm just gonna give them a little tap. Oh, I picked one up on my finger there somewhere. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of vermiculite and that's all I'm gonna cover them with because it seems like they prefer light uh, to germinate. The vermiculite will just kind of help to regulate moisture around the soil surface, help keep uh, any fungus or anything from developing, help keep the seeds moist but not too wet while they're germinating, and just be an overall good thing. You don't need to do it, but it certainly doesn't hurt. So when I take these in the house, I will put a humidity dome over top just to make sure that they're staying nice and moist on top and I'll just set them under my grow lights because the packages do say that they like light and warmth to germinate. The one package said about two weeks and the other packages said seven to ten days. So we'll see uh, when they germinate and we'll keep you posted on how they're doing. I'm just going to give them a quick spray, make sure they have good contact and that vermiculite is moist. Now I'm just gonna pop these out of my way and we'll work on those poppies. So the poppy seeds that I wanna grow are Ladybird from Vessie Seeds. And I have this, it's called Mikadoo or Mikadoo uh, from Heritage Harvest Seeds. This was, as you can see, a free gift. And uh, I just wanted to give this a try. I can't even remember. I did look it up online to see what it was when it came, but I don't even remember. I think it's just, I mean, it's a California poppy so pretty basic poppy I think. Poppy seeds are very very tiny so these are collected seeds. They're easy to collect. These are seeds I've collected over the years in this bag here and hopefully you can see them kind of rolling around in there. Very tiny, very tiny. So I've had to put this paper bag in a plastic bag because they were just getting all over my seed. Seed storage, every time I opened the box they were going flying because I I keep my seeds in these little cases inside a larger box and they seal up and keep the seeds in when they're closed. But when I open it, there's always seeds along the edges or somewhere, they're just so tiny. I have filled uh, toilet paper rolls that are empty, obviously, of toilet paper. And I've just filled them with soil, with just potting mix. The reason I'm using these is because oftentimes they say that you should always direct sow poppies, that they have a tap root and they don't like to be disturbed and all this. So I thought I'd try them in here. I'm sure years ago I grew these in small seed trays, uh, not these varieties, but other kinds of poppies, and put them out when they were young seedlings and they did fine but I can't remember for sure. Most years I just take the seed and I sprinkle it around the yard and wherever they pop up, they pop up. But this year I thought I would, you know, try and be a little more organized in where they wind up. So I have the two varieties. I guess I should get a tag. I'll just make one tag for each of these trays. They're just sitting in old like trays from the meat counter at the grocery store. So the ladybird is a red poppy with a black center. And I believe they're supposed to be a larger flower though. When I grew them last year, they were all really tiny and kind of dinky looking and I wasn't very impressed with them. But I thought maybe if I could place them in better lighting and better areas instead of just spreading them around and letting them get washed around by the spring rains and the snow melts, maybe they'd do better for me. So I'm gonna give that a try. There's some tags. 
Like I said, I'll just put one in each one of these trays here and they should be fine. Yeah, this says they're supposed to be 18 inches tall and I mean, my plants were like this. So I don't know what I where I went wrong with them last year, but we don't want to do that. So this package says they should be but they do not like to be transplanted, hence the paper tubes. I can just pull the tube back and disturb the roots very little. But if they must be started indoors, it should be four to six weeks before your average last frost. And my average last frost is in about four, four and a half weeks. They say to just uh, cover the seed lightly and then provide darkness for these to germinate. So let's see what the others, if they tell me anything about them. These just say, well, they say to direct seed in the garden an eighth of an inch deep and uh, two to three weeks prior to your last frost in spring. And I probably will maybe go and sprinkle a few around in a few places, but I'd like to kind of see what they do. I do have some poppies that just come up around the yard. Uh, I suspect these might wind up doing that as well. But I'm going to do, I think I'll just treat them both basically the same, cover lightly, provide darkness. Oh, see, and the seeds are so tiny. They're stuck all over. That's what happens with with poppy seeds, it's not the the seed seller's fault. So I'm just gonna be taking a little pinch and just sprinkling it on top because there's no really good way to just get one, one at a time. I mean, I could take a damp toothpick, dip one out, put it in, but that's way too much work for me. So I'll maybe bring you in a little closer so hopefully you can see the seeds touching the soil, reaching the soil here and uh, cover them up. I think I'll just put some vermiculite on them and they'll go in my house, so. Let's get them planted. <laughs> so that was all there was to getting those planted. It was a pretty simple process. Uh, you may have been able to tell, I'm not sure, the Mikadu seeds were actually, I would say probably three times as big as the, the ladybird seeds. Again, still extremely small, but I was able to see a little bit better that I think I only got about two to three seeds in each of the, the Mikadu rolls here. Is, I don't know, I could have up to a dozen in each of the ladybird ones. So all I'll be doing is when they do germinate, which, I th what did it say? I think it was a couple weeks. Once they do germinate, I'll let them grow on a little bit. And once they start to get their first set of true leaves, I will go through and thin them down so there's just one plant in each of these rolls. But until then, I need to keep them in darkness. So I'll just be taking another tray, probably one similar to these, and I'll just be putting it upside down on top and they'll be inside my house where it's nice and warm at that like 20 degree, 22 degree Celsius range and letting them grow there. Once they've germinated, obviously I'll pull that top off, put them under lights and let them grow out until it's time to get them planted in the yard. So there, I had two plants that uh, could have been direct sown into my yard in the next few weeks here, but I've chosen to plant them both up into pots and, and grow them inside and they're all done and ready to go. So what do you do with your seeds? Do you like to plant them outside early on in the season and just wait for them to get bigger? Or do you like to start them indoors? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.